Hey folks, you ever see any of your retired friends and you wonder, what's really the benefit of being retired? That person doesn't have a whole lot that they have to do except not go to work. Well, today I'm going to talk about three of the biggest benefits that I've experienced in the year that I've been retired. But before that, I just want to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Sabado. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome to the community. And this is just a channel where we talk all things early retirement. At 51, I had the opportunity to retire early, so I did, and I haven't looked back. And so uh, I share my journey in hopes that it either gives you information that you can use and you can go through any of the host of videos that I have down below, or you can, uh, it maybe it will inspire you. Uh, I, I do ask that if there's something that as you think about retirement or you're even wanting to uh, explore the possibility of, you know, what is it going to take for you to get there based on a, a particular type of criteria, ask a question. Because when people put a, uh, questions in the comments, I take those questions, I'll research those questions, and then I'll come back with an answer that uh, really should help you at least on your way to, to acquiring the information you need to make the best decision for yourself and your family. Because at the end of the day, uh, that's what it's about. But on that note, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so when I talk about the th my three big, uh, biggest benefits of retired life, uh, they're really simple. And they're not things that people, I think, normally think of. But the first one is, is that I have the freedom of time. My time is my time. I can do what I want, when I want, or nothing at all. And as much as we, when I was working, I felt like I had that time, I always had a meeting on Monday. I always had a phone call I had to take. I always had to ask somebody or alert somebody that I was going on vacation. Now, I don't have to do any of those things. When I want to get up and go, I can get up and go. So, for example, yesterday I woke up and I said, you know, I asked my wife, I said, you want to go up to Lake Tahoe? And she said, fine. So we took the drive up to Lake Tahoe, hung out and gambled for a little bit. And I actually won some money. For the first time, I actually won a significant sum of money. I mean, significant is all relevant, but when you're retired, you're not quite a starving student, but you're on a retirement budget. You know what I'm saying? So went up, won some money, but it was beautiful because driving to Tahoe, it's an easy drive. You go up through the trees, you have a bunch of canyons, you have rock formations. We were able to see where some of the big fires were last year. So you could see and really start to process the, 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 what, what may have happened within nature during that time. I mean, it was just, just a fascinating, fascinating drive had lunch and then drove home and we were home by dinner time. So it was, but I couldn't have done that if I was working. If I was working, then I would have had to call in sick or I had to take a vacation day. And I would have had to clear a calendar to make sure I didn't have any uh, meetings on my schedule and all of those types of things. And so, you know, when you think about your time, a lot of times it's you're doing something for the benefit of something else. And so when you look at your job, ask yourself the question, is a, if, I, if I won the lottery, would I do what I'm doing right now for free? And if the answer is no, then try to figure out what it is that you would do if you won the lottery. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's really what it's about. It's about living your life on your terms, doing what it is that you want to do when you want to do it, and sometimes choosing to do nothing else. The second one is I, just to reduce stress. I don't have things hanging over my head anymore. I don't have, I don't have deadlines that I have to meet. The only deadline that I have to meet is putting content out on my channel. And the only reason I imposed that deadline on myself is because I have a responsibility to the community because as part of my personal mission statement to uplift the human condition, I've committed to each of you out there that I was going to put information up that might be helpful to each of you. But in terms of life stress, having to deal with people that I don't want to deal with, I, it's it's interesting because as I, as I go further into retirement, I have more and more capacity. And all that capacity is, is that time to think. And so instead of being in these compressed time frames and having to process a bunch of information right away, which creates stress, it's, I'm able to kind of blow it out and really dig down and, and dig deep in, in the certain things. And, and one of the biggest challenges that I had are just some of the people I associated with. Some of the people I associated with would create incredible amounts of aggravation for me and incredible amounts of stress. And I started peeling back some of those relationships. Some of the relationships that I had, I felt like I was responsible for the well-being of other people. And I realized that, <clears throat> number one, most of those people didn't want me responsible for their well-being. And number two, 
It's not my responsibility. And so I don't, I don't have that stress. Um, I don't have the work stress. I, I think I've mentioned that the last job that I had was a bit trying for me. And there was a bunch of stress around that because there's always things that you're trying to get done and there's things that you're trying to, to process and get your arms around. And I don't have that anymore. And so I just don't have much stress at all. I, I go to sleep at night every night and I have incredible dreams. Um, I don't sleep as long as I thought I would sleep because I don't have as much that I have to rest from. It's every day. Uh, I, I think I've mentioned that the reason I came up with the name Sabado is because every day is like Saturday. And, and for those of you that don't know, Sabado is Saturday in Spanish. And so as the song goes, every day is like Saturday, my friend. Go to sleep, wake up. Yo, it's Saturday again. So it's uh, so there's no, I don't have the stresses that most people have. And again, it's hard for us to really understand how much stress we don't have until, uh, or how much stress we have until that stress starts to peel off. And when I first retired, I thought I was stress-free because I didn't have to go into work the next day. But it wasn't until my being started to really acclimate to being retired to where now I don't think that I have to go to work or that something's wrong because I'm not getting up in the morning to go to work. Now, I don't expect to get up and go to work and I expect that my life is driven by the, by the calendar on my Apple phone that I, my wife and I keep so that way we don't have overlapping obligations and we can make sure we spend time together or know exactly where each other are at in case something were to happen. And that's about it. And I don't have to make plans a long time in advance because I don't have anything else I have to do. If I know that Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are pretty clear, then I can say I can do it on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. If I don't want to do something, I just say I don't want to do it. And I don't have to worry about how other people feel because at the end of the day, People are going to, half of the people you meet are going to like you. Half of the people that you're going to meet are not going to like you. And then half of the people that are aware of decisions that you have to make are going to like that decision or think favorably of that decision. And half of the people aren't. So at the end of the day, I guess my point being, you can't please everybody all the time. So the moment you stop trying, then you don't have to worry about it. And I think when you're at work, you always have colleagues or peers or people working for you, team members, corporate folks that you have to make happy or that you have to be correct for, because if you're not, it can impact your livelihood. Well, I don't have anything that impacts my livelihood now. I just, so I just do what it is that I want to do, except for this channel, because this channel is something that I'm really passionate about. And I think it's really important that you get good information from me because I sit in a, in a seat that many of you will be sitting in at some point and may, perhaps the only person that is going to be able to provide some of the information that you're looking for is me. And so I do that because of myself, but it brings me fulfillment. So it's, I have stress, but it's stress that I put on myself, but it's stress because I want to make sure that what I do for you, I give a hundred percent because I care about you enough. And I always make the comment and it's one of my mantras that if I care about you enough to answer your question, it's always going to be the truth, and I care about you, and we're all friends. So, uh, And then the last one, and this one I, I want to dig a little bit deeper into because I had an experience today, but it's it's pursuing my personal interests. And, and, and one of the things that's, that's really critical and I'm able to do in a different way than I do on, this, on the channel here is investing in the community. And, and part of that required me to step outside of my comfort zone. And in a way that was not stress inducing. So many of you are aware, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, that I have an interest in becoming a UC master gardener. I love gardening. I've been gardening uh, for years now. I, I garden all year round. I garden in the winter. I garden in the summer. I garden in the spring. I always have something popping up and growing. Uh, if you go to my Instagram channel at Ask Sabado, You'll see that I have a whole host of uh, uh, gardening videos and I do plants, flowers. I've planted some trees. Um, I just I'm just all after. And in fact, this this past weekend, I was out trimming uh, bushes in the front, probably the least of my uh, gardening skills, because it's I, I'm just not good at that type of thing, like the landscaping piece of it. But I, I do it because it's necessary. But there's what's called the UC Master Gardener Program. And so the UC Master Gardener Program is run by the University of California. 
and it trains you. It's, I think, a 15-week training program where they train you on all aspects of gardening. And then you become a UC Master Gardener volunteer. And the process for getting to becoming a UC Master Gardener is you first have to fill out an application. And so, and, and you'll start to see why this steps outside of my comfort zone. Um, but first you have to fill out an application. And so you, it's, it's not like you just say, hey, I want to volunteer and I go in. You fill out an application. You talk about all of the work that you've done in the community, the type of community service that you've done, the type of volunteer work that you've done, and so on. Then you go to a session that's called the Meet the Master Gardener session. And I did that today. And I know that I am one of the younger people within my peer group, and I know that most of the UC Master Gardeners are retired people, and there's not many that look like me. And so I went into an environment that I was really an outsider in. And I'm not, most of you may not know this, but I have a little bit of shyness about me. And as much as I talk, I know you're saying, there's no way this guy is shy. But I'm, I've always been a little bit shy. And so, I, and I never liked big groups of people. And so what I did is I said, in order for me to pursue my interest at a higher level, I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone. And so I stepped outside of my comfort zone, went to this meeting. At this meeting, there were about 75 people in there. And I didn't want to just be the guy that was in there. And people say, oh, there's that tall guy in the corner. But I wanted to really participate. And so I was asking questions. I went to the booths and I talked to some of the other master gardeners and got some information from them at the coordinator of the program and really stepped outside and, and had a great time. Uh, now, the next step is an interview. So in a few days, I go in and I interview with the Master Gardener program and some of the, some of, a couple of the Master Gardeners. And then they, they tell me whether or not I made it to the program. And if I am accepted to the program, then it's 15 weeks from June to May where I go in every Tuesday from 9 to 2.30, get a crash course in gardening. And then I also do some lab work in one of the horticultural gardens and uh, in town. And then I'm required to do 50 hours of, I don't want to say community service cause it's not like I got arrested, but 50 hours of volunteer work, whether that's in low income communities, whether that's in elementary schools, whether that's in, um, elderly facilities, whether it's in private, uh, uh pri a private garden, helping somebody with, with issues with their garden, whether it's working and, and doing some volunteering at a nursery, whatever it is. But it's outside of my comfort zone because as an adult, I haven't done that type of work before. But I'm in a place now where I'm comfortable being outside of my comfort zone because the fact is, is for the last 30, 40 plus years, I was some important guy that had a big job that people had to respect, people had to talk to, and people felt like they needed to interact with. I'm no longer that guy. And so that's so being an anonymous citizen already takes me outside of my comfort zone. But then now that I'm anonymous citizen with this time, what else is it that I can do? And so, you know, so the third big benefit of being retired is the, is the fact that I have, I'm able to pursue my hobbies and I have the time to do that. And I have the ability to do that. And, and I, I think that what retirement really does, and I think the last um, benefit, and this is a bonus benefit for those of you that, that stuck around until the end. Um, and I appreciate you rocking with me like that is it gives you the opportunity to reinvent yourself. You know, I think about my life and I think about the things that went well. And, you know, there were there are things that went well because I was able to uh, retire at 51. I mean, let's face it. But there's some things that didn't go well. There's certain relationships that I had that didn't go the way that I wanted them. Uh, family relationships that I wish were a little bit different, that I could have managed a little bit differently. Um just approaches to different things that I wish I could have done differently. Things about myself and the way that I've interacted and the type of person I am and, and maybe my temperament or my, you know, uh, my, my disposition on, on certain things or the way that I, I teach. It. But my, my point being is that now I have the opportunity to be whoever it is I want to be because I'm not going to be saddled by everything that ever happened at work or everything that ever happened in life because this, folks, is the last uh, is the last hurrah. So I really had the opportunity to reinvent myself, which I think is a bonus benefit of retirement. Because when you're working, 
your last job and the experiences you had at your last job, you know, there's always a reference. There's always somebody that says, hey, I need a reference to know what you were like at your last job. And they talk to the person at your last job. And if you rub people the wrong way, or you didn't get along with people at your last job, that's going to move forward. Well, when you retire, you don't have a reference. You just go out and get after it. And so then it gives you the opportunity to say, how is it that I want the final act of my life to be? And my final act, I'm hoping, is another 40 years ahead of me. Um, actually, you know, uh, 49 at this point, 48. But my, you know, I have another X number of times. So how do I, how do I want to go out? What's the legacy that I want to leave behind? And so, so those are, uh, you know, I want to get, a, I like to get quick ones out from time to time. I want to get a quick one out to you today. Talk to you because I was really excited about this experience, but I wanted to tie it into a bigger picture. But, uh, you know, if you did like this, uh, if, if you did like the content, you know, you can feel free to subscribe just so you get that notification button. And those of you that have been rocking with me for a while know that I, I put up content judiciously and I try to put it up uh, twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And, um, and then I try to put up shorts on a, on a daily basis or every couple of days just to keep the motivation going because... You know, while you're while you're still going into the office and you're dealing with the things that you have to deal with, I, you know, it's really important that we keep our eyes on the prize. And I, my prize is that each of you um, find your pathway to living your best life and feel good about it. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.